everybody was happy. And then came New Year's Eve. We had political crises, but there was never a, a new winter event. Since some years, there is a new form of Santa Claus uh, called Gazprom. <laughs> uh, when it's getting cold in Europe, there is a new event, the Gazprom event. Some disputes pop up between uh, the direct neighbors of Russia and Russia, and suddenly gas transports are blocked. Now, our Serbian friends made a new experience that uh, they thought very cleverly, we make a deal with Gazprom and are on the safe side. This was the wrong calculation, as they must uh, experience uh, in the last winter. So this reflects also, I think, an element which should be addressed in this discussion, energy dependency. Now from my point of view, we still live, and this is an issue which should be understood very, uh, very well understood in the Western Balkans and also in your country. We still live with some illusions as Europeans. In the present crisis, this could be seen. We have a common currency, but we don't have a common monetary and fiscal policy. That's a huge deficit as we experience now. We don't have a common foreign policy. We don't have a common foreign energy policy. Two huge deficits where we all pay a very high price for that. So, and we have a common market, but we still have the illusion that we have national energy policies. This is completely illusionary in a common market. Now, I think for the Western Balkans, the message should be understood. It's important to have a national energy policy, no question about that. But it must be embedded in a regional policy. I think this is a very important factor. One of the strengths of the European energy market based on the electric grid is that we have almost a European-wide grid. We don't have that for the European gas market. And this is, again, a huge deficit. So from my point of view, it will be very important that Europe will say farewell to its illusions. Once we would have a common European gas market, the power equation between Gazprom and the EU would be very different. Once we would have a gas grid, not only from east to west, from also from west to east, the situation would be completely different. So from my point of view, we should work very hard to create a strong position, not against our partners outside of the EU, but for ourselves, that we can reduce the risks of energy dependency and give positive signals and positive incentives to those who want to make business with Europe by selling energy to Europe. So if we bring together energy efficiency with energy security by creating strong European-wide markets based on the infrastructure, that this is a real market, we have two important steps. We have made two important steps forward. But there is a third one. The question, how will we produce our energy for the future? And there, ladies and gentlemen, let me put aside the religious debate or the real debate 
uh, between fossil fuels and nuclear power. I'm completely convinced that nuclear power is a dead end street. It will be always um, with less energy efficiency, with high risks, and it will be not a market uh, based uh, um, energy industry. It will be mostly state based in it, uh, industry. And I see also the risk of proliferation, which will be one of the major challenges in the coming years, but I don't want to address that issue now. But let, let me put aside this discussion. If France and some others think they should go that path, they should do it. It's their decision. And others have a different uh, decision. Well, we should really rely on uh, and address the issue of um, energy, the need for energy consumption in the future. And there I think if we want to have a sustainable energy system, which will be a global one, the only way is to invest in the renewable, uh, in, the, in the renewable energy sector. And there allow me to say Germany was very successful and I'm proud about that. Usually laws are seen by the uh, business community with a lot of mistrust. But uh, our law for renewable energy is created a boom of private investment. Today we are at the top by investments in wind energy and the use of wind energy. Mm -hmm. And I think this law could be really an example how to invent a new industry, how to address the issue of climate change, of energy efficiency, and not finance that by public money. We opened a new market for private investors. This was the core of the business miracle. which we achieved uh, by inventing our renewable energy law. We had a strong opposition, of course, 